Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm in the studio um, painting a commission for someone uh, in the United States and um, it's of a local church and I have the picture um, that I chose on the uh, computer uh, and um, I've produced a lovely little watercolour uh, and I'd like to lead you through the painting process. So really this is looking at um, painting snow scenes using watercolour. Enjoy the video. Well, here we go then. The drawing is down onto the board, and um, as I say, it's going to be a snow scene, thoroughly damping a number four mop that points well. And I'm actually going to damp the paper a little with this one, just so as we can get a little bit of run of the paint. Just keeping fairly tidy down the area there. And this is going to be a snow scene. And consequently, to achieve that, we need to leave white paper where the snow will lay. Which is um, easy to do in many ways. Now I'm only damping the top, because I think I can get a run down the um, the paper after that because I need some hard edges right first thing I'm going to do I'm going to use Windsor blue and that's got to be particularly dark so plenty of Windsor could be um, Prussian if you wished and to that I'm adding cadmium red because I want the blue to, to have a bit of warmth, a bit of a purple sort of a feel to it, but albeit quite dark. So here we go then. So there's the lovely dark blue. You can see that bursting into that um, um, that damp area. It's lovely when it does that. You know that you've damped the paper correctly. Then, as we come down, actually with that bursting like that, may decide to have um, to have a area of um, cloud that may be useful. A bit more blue going in there, just in that top right-hand corner, just to darken. Then, I'm going to use the point of the brush. Got to keep this paint running point of the brush to we have a lovely it's like a tree area there so we've got to watch that we leave white paint sorry white paper at that particular point at the right shape too so that's another interesting thing with this sort of uh, subject you you don't have to know great deal about trees but you've got to be pretty observant when you come to um, paint around areas because they will tell you the contour of that uh, of that tree and of course the shape and size which is all important and this is the type of tree that sort of hangs down, comes out, sort of a fir tree effect. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. Hopefully I will get there because that's um, not crucial but it's important to this painting in the grounds of Gallywood Church. Now we'll see just a little bit of the branches overhanging in the lower area. 
so that's working quite well and it goes particularly dark in that lower area but we'll attend to that I think at a later stage maybe nice to leave the trunk of that tree unpainted at this stage try and get the feeling of a bit of depth really that's what I'm looking for okay now with just a little bit of red in there again I want to marry up this side it's just beginning to dry well it's not a problem well I say it's not a problem let's hope it's not a problem and we're working our way down there and I, and I, I really require to have at least some colour on the sky at that point so I'm making that cloud break up a bit there and when I do that I'm going to have to um, just pull that down nice and tight there we go and when I do that I'm going to have to do the same to this area here there we go just use my mill stick to shape that up because I need to get the weather vane in not too large so cut that off just a tad there we go and then we come down the side of the church that side the spire perfect that'll be that should work fine down the side of the that area there and then we'll pull that in just catch that before it completely dries that's lovely a bit more blue nice to have another little patch of blue just running there and that then continues that side if you notice if you put a patch of blue at an angle there you need a patch the other side to to match it really now we're going to have light coming from the left so the left hand side I've added a bit more of the um, of the cadmium red in there and there's just a hint of a bit of a cloud there wouldn't be a bad idea I think um, to give that cool feel to the sky to start with which is always um, desirable but not vital now I'm going to be a little bit darker again as I come down into this lower area because I want to be a little darker around yet another fir tree of some sort and this is slightly different variety so need to make sure certain we depict that if we can with the right brush strokes that really need to be put in with the point I suppose thinking about it and uh, then we work down just trying to keep this nice and damp as we come down to the side of the church there and then we've got a bit of a buttress standing out just trying to keep that running yep that looks to me to be pretty much as I would have liked then we come down to the side of the tower there just remember to do this side a bit of a buttress area there I want to keep this running too don't want to lose any of the um, of the dampness of the paint or not too much anyway and then we come down to there top of the ridge tile and this has got to be kept fairly clean and tight there we go 
and then we come that's the top of another little tree there and then we come to the top side of the church there at the back and then in the lower area come to the top of the trees in the distance and they're going to be quite blue but at this stage we're going to bring that right down like that just finish them about there there we go I'll lift off that very shortly before that runs back and then we have just a little area here that we need to tend to trying to keep it all white all as if there's snow on everything at, apart from the sky at the moment because that way we will hopefully be able to achieve desired the desired um, effect and now we're looking at the edge of that conifer again fir tree yes coming out like that one or two gaps in the branch work but not too many on this one it's quite a dense tree that one and uh, want to show that a bit more denser than that one but all lovely and snowy that's what we're looking for and and then of course we come down into the lower area that I'm going to make quite quite dark so I'm going to use Indian red now with the blue try and give it a little bit of dark warmth Indian red and blue a bit more red there we go and that is going to also pick up in the lower area of this of the tree area there try and pick up a little bit of that sort of sense of it's nice and dry so we're going to have to just soften that shortly that's it and this then comes into another dark area there that the conifer is or the tree is pretty much finished so we can finish the edge of that and the edge of that and then that finishes nicely onto a wall area there down and away into the distance there we go and then all I need to do before I finish is to take a damp brush because I want to soften this just a little so that we're not getting hard edges right on the top there see the way I'm using just a damp brush to soften that so it just bleeds up a little um, and we I think let's just have another just thinking about it I need something which is a little darker just on the corner there not really sure why but it just appeals to me and um, have something it's like tree like shaped in that distance there there we go and nice and uneven edged on the top perfect I like the look of that a little bit darker there so that we get a bit of a dome effect from that good so that is the first stage of this painting of Gullywood Church well there you go the sky is um, dry now um, as you can see it's dried up very very nicely uh, got a bit of depth behind the snow areas in the distance now um, I'm going to paint um, the walls of the building because you've got to remember that ledges and walls 
um, will have anything flat will accumulate snow so we've got to just be aware of the areas that won't have snow on them so I'm going to start off by doing uh, a part of the tower of the mill of the church and um, I'm looking for a grey so into that first mix I'm stimulating that grey again it's just dried out in the palette I'm going to add a little bit of light red I'm looking for a grey so I've already got blue in there got a little bit of red but if I add light red that comes up sort of like a grey but a warm grey then I'm going to add raw sienna which gives it which is the three primaries blue red and yellow and that will give me um, quite a nice grey I think don't be too too dark with this reasonably light and that should give me a grey to shape the brush right and this grey comes down like that as I say we've got to remember that we will have a certain amount of shadow colour down this right hand side but that's not uh, going to be a major problem so let's get the right hand side first and I'm going to leave a little area that I think might have snow driven onto it so that's the reason for that down there a little bit down the ridge there that would make sense a little bit there and then we're going to have a little bit there where possibly will be no snow in that area the back edge here is not going to have snow it will have shadow on that eventually but at this stage in the painting I'm leaving that there we go and we've also got an area there and there that will have snow on it on the tops oh, and that will also need colour so that's the um, spire just make that a little bit jagged there just so as it doesn't look too um, too uniform then we have a little bit of this grey edge just pull that in down there and that gets pulled down there but of course on the top of the buttress areas we have snow and across the ridge there leave that white at this stage now I'm going to add light red to that because the brickwork or the well it is brickwork it has a little warmer feel it's not um, red brick not initially but it does have some warmth and it comes out like that it's that buttress area it's that buttress area there and I'm going around the bell tower where the bells actually hang like that and then down there so we can then see a little bit of a snow on the top of that buttress and a little bit of snow on the top of that one I think we can pick that up there we go but that's in shadow anyway so that will get lost eventually <coughs> that's good so we've got a bit of warmth amongst the snow lovely now real warmth comes with purely light red for the ridge tile 
that is quite uneven and in actual fact it's got to sit like that so it's going to sit along there like that not bad I did have a little bit of snow on that and of course some areas may not have snow on there so I'm having an area like that that's got no snow and I'm going to have another area just here with no snow so this is the red tile roofing on the roof area like that good continuing with this theme I'm going to have an area there that's got no snow don't want to overdo this limited snow area like that but it's always nice to have some and I'm going to have a little around the chimney there always a good place to have um, a bit of war a bit of warm color like that there we go good now I've just put a little bit more yellow into that and this is because let's just put a little even a considerable amount of yellow keep it nice and light because we've got to have the gable end of the church there like that just remember where the snow will be positioned something that I've got to remember not there but on top of the buttress areas either side there not there but underneath there so there is some red amongst that but we'll um, we'll delve into that later on and there you go just going to add a little bit more a little bit of red to that purely to bring the changes a little be a little bit dark, it's just darkened it a touch too. Just a little ridge along the bottom there, I think, that may hold snow. There's also another area there. I've got windows there. I'm going to paint around them initially. Gives me the opportunity to put snow on if required, or leave white, in other words. Um, there, like that that finishes nicely there a little bit of a wall with snow on the top um, yeah that seems to be working quite well a little bit more red now just to give this wall there a little bit of warmth windows notice how I work the way across rather than just painting one side and then the other work my way across and then across the bottom there then into what would be the depth of the snow on the ground that's that also a little bit on the that area there the gable area and um, now I'm going to look at a real yellowing so a little bit more of the yellow for the gravestones now they just sort of shine yellow or have a little bit of yellow color on them this time of year you know when when we get snow so can always darken them later but it's um really um, 
they will need to be darkened for obvious reasons uh, a little bit darker a couple of them a little bit darker color here and there a little bit there like that and this one of course has a has a section uh, on the ground and that one does too but some of these have snow on them of course so we're not going to get too complicated with um, what we can see in that respect because if we get too complicated with there we lose the um, the interest into the building now next will come um, the windows now for the windows I'm using a rigger only a small rigger and I'm going to put in the belfry windows first they're that I'm going to use the Windsor blue again with Indian red I want these to be quite dark and quite warm actually so quite a bit of red there plenty of Windsor blue a bit more red it's vital that we get um, these uh, in quite dark right let's just remove a little of the paint now we have a small section of window there we have another area here we can just see the little window that in the belfry and uh, oh, there is another window here now this is very interesting because I'm putting the shadow in as it comes round then I'm putting in the cross sections that will have snow on them and all of a sudden you've got a lovely feeling of depth within that um, that window and next will come some little sections along the underside there and the undersides of those because that's where these sections show a bit of sort of uh, shadow then we will have a section of shadow there and while we have this color let's put in the shadow on the right hand side there's a ball there I'll do the finer detail shortly and then we have the shadow coming down there of the belfry the tower like that comes down and widens slightly try and keep that fairly straight that's why I've got this stick just to help help me um, maintain a little bit of um, depth to that that's good then we have a section there now this is where we're going to get interesting because we can actually see the other side of that there so we come down like that with the shadow notice how I'm going in nice and light with the shadow sorry nice and dark with the shadow always a good thing to do um, if you want to show up um, snow areas and that goes like that then there is another area of let's just bring that down like that there we are just where we have another little bit of that area like that and hopefully that will give us a sense that we do have shadow on the sides of those buttress areas 
there we are we can just touch those in shortly and from that would then come a shadow like that all of a sudden you've got the feeling that those buttress areas stand away um, and we just continue with this really um, we do have a small area of that side like that put a small little roof on that that's it that's good and what else have we got right now I'm going to weaken that a touch and put a little bit more blue with that just to ring the changes um, now we have an area that just underneath the overhang of the tiles there that's in shadow we have an area that swings around inside that window and then we have a section of the window there we've got three sections to this window not being too complicated with this um, because honestly I don't feel it needs it I want to keep it fairly simply painted but albeit it has to be um, fairly authentic in many ways um, if that's possible okay so that's that window just check it comes down far enough that side so we've got a feeling that the window runs along there's also which will help sharpen up that straighten up that window there's a um, touch of the overhang there that's it now buttress areas another buttress there that comes down like that and all that comes out there again and down like that so that's a double buttress area whoop Get too far over with that and another buttress area there that's not quite as visible but it does have a bit of overhang there like that and that comes down at that sort of angle so let's bring that up just a little bit of snow on that that's worked out quite well and this comes across and underneath and then it comes across and underneath again so let's make that a little bit larger we can attend to that shortly that's good that's fine now clean the brush and add a little bit of red to that because I want slightly different color for the windows in uh, there like that one there one there one there um, we're going to have a window in there obviously one there get these in fairly quickly it's looking good there's also another window here that sort of don't see any real detail to that so that's always a good thing to do to get that in um, other than that we're talking about um, shadow really so let's clean the brush and have a think about what our next move is. Now, I'm continuing by putting a little bit more of the Windsor Blue in to that mix and a little bit of the Cadmium, cadmium Red because I want this to be a slightly different uh, colour now to create 
the effect of shadow on to these trees. Now I'm using a flat because I want that to help me shape the varying shapes that I require for these trees because they are fir trees and I want them to appear like a fir tree but obviously we need let's just go up a little bit higher with that there we go that's better so it's tinting the white paper but also leaving some areas unpainted so that we can get a nice feel of that uh, a little bit of sun coming from the left so I'm going to leave um, some areas of that um, uh, completely in shadow now I'm painting around the chimney that may very well come up a little darker in the end leaving one or two little touches of white snow here and there to indicate snow there then I'm coming down there like that making that chimney a little more narrow it was a little too okay, it was a little too wide and then just dotting around trying to indicate the direction of that shadow and it's there and it's down that area there but of course over here it's totally different standing upright and going out there we go fairly dark as we come down and picking up just go down with that just a little bit more just a little dark around there because I think that's how it would look a bit better like that there we go and then I'm going down that edge of that gable again and round the top of that remembering to leave white paper always a very important thing to do yep that seems to have worked quite well and I'm using a similar effect for the this one here but this time taking a bit of the brush for this and I'm sweeping down so that we've got a little bit more light on well not any more light but at least a different sort of approach to the way that tree is in shadow there we are and then a little bit more red again taking some paint off the brush and just attending to this tree there may need to just darken in places but this is really to give a sense of sunlight onto um, the, t the snow areas of the tree really then touch more blue because I want more blue for this area here and considerably lighter could be darker but I've already gone dark above now this area is in shadow because of the tower of the church is actually casting a shadow onto that there we go so all of a sudden just pick up a little bit more blue I like the idea of a, a real touch of blue in that area there we go just feel that that needs that 
definition may need just another little touch of really dark color shortly right now changing brush now we're going to get the real dark color for the shadow sides and it's just red and blue nice fresh color this time and here we go the sun is very low so consequently you'll get a shadow on there coming down like that onto the blue onto the white which then turns that snow area into a different colour like that and we then have a shadow running from there across the top then all of a sudden at an angle it comes across like that we just put that down there like that and this is the magic of watercolour the real feeling of lights and darks and that finishes there go we also have this shadow on the gable end there and for that gable end I'm going to add the red again because it is on the brick side of the building so we come across like that we come over the window which will be shown up later on in a different sort of you know once that uh, dries off like that buttress areas again coming into light beautiful bit more water and then this obviously will then all be in shadow because we've got shadow on the roof so we just pull that down like that and allow that to run in a clean form across the bottom and allow that to run don't it too even there because it is snow so we want that to be fairly uneven there we are then on the gable end real strong dark color has to be darker than the color that we have in the background in other words the sky so then we have add, just shape that brush up we have that comes down there like that perfect and then there like that very very dark just run that down neatly into there It is all about tones. Um, any painting really is about tone values. Um, we do have a buttress area there that has snow. So that needs to be left. But a lot of that buttress area. And then another area there like that. But that one is all going to be lost in shadow go isn't that lovely to have that lovely deep dark shadow and this area will be exactly the same nice and dark 
deep dark shadow there is a buttress area that just stands out there if I can get that in without being too dark there we are brilliant that's looking good now just before it completely dries and whoops I'm going to put a shadow area across there a shadow area down there so that separates those two areas that's good and I'm going to darken that shadow I just feel that on this gable end it does need darker shadow so I'm coming down like that and then out and down that has got to just be lifted away and then I'm going to have a shadow from that buttress running across like that down across like that and down and then of course inside that window is going to have quite a strong shadow area here we go just touch inside that as well perfect that's perfect that shows up a nice feeling of shadow there then I'm going to get some shadow uh, on this this chimney is going to be in complete shadow so we don't want any light there it's a little touch on the top but basically nothing there at all so that's in shadow and that's justified because we have lots of shadow from the chimney there this is all going to be in shadow as well there perfect just going to get the rigger just to tease that away into a softer sort of feel just as if this trees casting that shadow on there like that and then we're going to have remove a little bit of that and then we're going to have the top of that in shadow and there again and all on the underside of that we're going to have a little bit of shadow then running again down this wall just got to depict a feeling of of sort of like um, That lovely feeling that perhaps there's that's the trees that's casting that shadow that will finish there and there may need to lift off just a touch in places so that then comes down to there notice how I'm softening I always feel that um, shadows from trees in the distance need softening shadows from um, um, edges like the, 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 the buttress and the overhang um, probably doesn't need too much in the way of softening more hard edge now I've added more water because this is where we get quite delicate with our washers of shadow but more blue in the mix and we come across there like that and that then shadow down there and all of a sudden you're getting that lovely and we may even have hmm, yeah let's just cross a little bit of that onto there just to extend 
the sense that we do have that tree shadow casting across there gives a nice variety of, of tone that's great and then we go straight onto the snow and this then runs across there like that Trying to give it a dappled feel. Going to sort that buttress out in a second. Go around that. That works. I think it probably does. Goes off then across to there where there is a gravestone and right into that corner where that buttress would be in shadow. And that would be in shadow lower down. All these lovely little areas that all of a sudden show up. Um, parts of the architecture. Beautiful. Then we now pull bit more shadow across this foreground. I'm completely losing that corner. Don't want that to show up at all. Then, as we come forward, some of this shadow is quite broken and uneven till eventually it gets virtually nothing here. But, of course, in the distance, we do have shadow again. And that runs right the way across the back there. Let's go right the way up to there. And then, we then need to pull that down like that. And underneath that tree, like that, and then we use the softening technique again, just so it's, it's not a complete hard edge line. And that church really extends a shadow pretty much right the way across to that tree, where hmm, maybe. There's a shadow on the side of that tree and the back edge. That's all going to be shown shortly. That's perfect. Well, where would these additional shadows come in? Well, they would be down the back edge of the gravestones there. That's it. And these have a real strength to them. Just a very narrow one down there, same there. That one wouldn't have any, or oh, it'd have one there, and then one down that back edge there, just to show that. Now, some of these may very well be in shadow, so I'm slightly weakening that in color, and I'm going to put that, put these in pretty much dark not not all of it dark completely perhaps some there maybe some here in the background like that and we may have a tall one here that's in shadow so I'm just making this up as I'm going along because I need that one to be quite a quite a large affair like that and then we use this same color to produce 
the casting shadow from those there down that back edge might as well have a touch down there that'd be a bit wider we wouldn't see that we wouldn't see that that's lovely and now we're just weakening this because I want to have a little bit of shadow around the top there and over where these are so that we can actually see that they are in some form of shadow cast by a tree or something out of picture but it also helps to show up the form and the shape of that shadow of those um, areas and that can then slide through to there and then softening again as we run across that snow area drawing let's draw that right the way across there and down there that's nice yep yeah, and across there, across there, that then goes across there like that as an additional sort of area. Really, it's 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 making it up as you go along to give the balance to the whole snow scene, and I think that with that sort of application would probably be reasonably successful on that. Bit of shadow down there, and then of course sweeping across there, so that we then give interest into this bottom corner, which I think it did need. Just sweep that through. That's it, lovely. And then just a little bit more there. Good. One or two finishing touches. Now the final thing to do on a snow scene like this is to look at those fine little finishing touches. And to start off, this clump of this tree here requires some gently attended to um, trunk work so does this one there down that back edge and just under there just so as we can see where that tree stands like that and this may very well have slightly more deeper shadow early on don't to overdo that shadow um, let's just pull that across just spread that through that's fine probably a deeper shadow slightly to the left as well there you go so that sits down nicely a um, uh, bit more red in there now because I want to pick up uh, a sense of the trunk that we can see occasionally with little bits, one or two branches that are heading off uh, out like that and just smudge them through just so as it's an impression there we go. it's nice just to see one or two little trunks uh, and uh, branches softening in there and similar for this perhaps not as dark in actual fact that may not need it um, that's fine let's just be a little darker there because I feel that that probably would benefit from one or two lower branches that we can see just ah oh, there we go I knew there was something that it just required 
little bit there. Look at these lovely branches hanging across and down. There we are. So that's that. Um, these are very, very small. We may just see one or two of them, but nothing too defined. Just be very careful when you do this. It's got to be fine detail, which I don't normally do, but you know, I just feel I want, want to give this this lovely snow scene just a little of something different, just to um, give it a uh, a sense of depth and uh, not detail but just a bit of additional technique really that I'm sure you know a lot of you will appreciate uh, to know how to deal with certain areas as they arise um, always difficult even for anyone that's very experienced um, uh, to decide where we're going to, where you're going to really need these um, additional touches. Um, but you guys get the eye for it. And uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But that's the way um, things are in the art world in general. You know, sometimes you think you need certain things and when you put them in, you wish you hadn't have um, done so. But there you go. And we do have, that area comes down there and then shoots out. I just wanted to, to enhance this sort of sense of a buttress there don't know why but I just wanted to and then you take a brush like that and just soften it in there we go um, and speaking of softening I want to just remove just a little bit there because he's sort of causing me a bit of alarm that but that's not uh, not to say that it's going to be major but just a little bit like that um, lovely, yeah, I think that's probably, let's just try and pick up a little bit of that roof line there like that, and a little bit of this roof line as well, just so as we can see where that sort of sits up there. Bring that back down there like that. There we go. Hmm. Don't know whether that's really helped, so we can always take that out. There we go. That's good. Run through like that. There we are. There are the main finishing touches to this lovely painting of Gallywood Church. Um, let's take the surround away and um, sign up. Well the surround is off. Just one other thing that I need to do. Just going, I just feel that needs just a, something here. It's another technique that um, I feel is very useful. Um, if you want to create an additional feel to something soft in the background like a tree or something that just to enhance the whole thing there we go and this is the way that is done like that then on the right hand side we just put in a little bit of stronger shadow. 
and all of a sudden we've got ourselves sort of like a distant sort of image of a tree like that and then a little bit darker there and maybe another one with a little bit of a sharper edge put that there just to match up don't want that to over dominate but I just felt it did need something just at that point lovely we'll allow that to dry and while that's drying I'm going to sign it up and I'm going to sign it in the paint that I've used so it's a mix of all of those colours there I'm just going to sign it neatly in this bottom right hand corner sorry that's the left hand corner like that and a bit of red a bit of blue a bit of warmth along the bottom edge there there two little touches there you will see that all of a sudden it sort of like gives it that I don't know that just that little touch of warmth that for a snow scene is uh, is is vital really particularly in the foreground there 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 uh, oh yeah we can just about see the base of that uh, perhaps there not too much in the distance and um, just widen that a touch you know I'm you could say I'm playing around really uh, with it but um, it is uh, just try and shape that window a little bit there we go um, yeah I think that uh, that does it really well there you have it I hope you enjoyed watching the video um, and uh, just hope the client that uh, the commission was paid for um, uh, really is really pleased with it um, I think it's come off particularly well and uh, if you have enjoyed please subscribe to my YouTube channel click the link bottom right hand corner uh, and uh, I'll be painting more lovely landscapes uh, using watercolour for all you lovely painters out there in the future. So take care and happy painting.